All right, so now we are, we are at a phase where I am going to use these found images to really play with some of the issues of my design idea and to play with their proportions in particular, like how big the hand should be, um, what the line weight should be like, and some of the considerations that happen when we're working with graphic symbols as, to pose, as opposed to just line art and illustration. Okay, so we're, we're gonna use a lot of our previously learned compositing skills. And the first thing I wanna do is kinda clean it up. So I'm going to rasterize both of these so I can erase from them and edit them. I'm just doing this all in Photoshop, just to get a sketch ready for Illustrator. And even though there's some weird things about some of these images, like I don't understand what the bump is on that, that finger, right? This is gonna give me a really good head start. So I'm gonna take out debris. I'm gonna take out color. Well, let me reattach that fingertip. And why, why I will like compositing sometimes as opposed to just going right over my own sketches or drawings, though that's allowed for this project too, is that gives me kind of a safe way to experiment. I already have components that I can mess with. And it reminds me that uh, I'm in full control here. All right, now let's take out the color. Now this is gonna be rough and that's fine. I'm not trying to get perfectly clean yet. I'm simply trying to get to a, a more kind of orderly version of my sketch that takes into account the lessons of those different design approaches. So I'm just selecting out the color. Very good. I don't want it to look like a Frankenstein finger, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Very good. I don't really like these lines. I might replace those with my own. In fact, I might just cut off right here because I want to keep that kind of standardized line weight. Yeah, so that's going to help. All right, now, so I've got most of the hand kind of cleaned up. I'm not going to obsess with this for now, though I will acknowledge that it's weird and it will have to change. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to do a loose cutout here. Of this globe. What I like about this globe is that it has a lot of dynamic action going on. And you notice how it's not on a central line, it's tilted. But what this does is it reminds me, I need this to be able to scale big and small as a symbol. And so if I'm gonna have white lines on black, those lines are going to have to be contained by a black outline. You know, just like cutting out a paper. And then I can try the other approach as well, which is just selecting all the white lines. If I do, uh, if I uncheck contiguous, I can select all of them, hit Command J, duplicate them onto their own. 
right? And this isn't a grayscale, this is black, black cutout, you know, design. So I'm going to do a color overlay on it at normal mode, 100% opacity, and just fill it first with just solid black and see how that works. So now I have kind of a coloring book version. And it shows me I need to clean up something on the finger here. All right. Now the other thing I can do is have the coloring book version like this. I can hold down option and say layer merge visible while holding down option and that will merge those together just as is on a new layer. And then I can play with inverting that. Like so, going to image adjustment and then just swapping the white for black and the black for white. Oh, did it on the wrong layer. Right. Now, this might be interesting. What if I just take this, I'll do it this way, this line work as is, duplicate it, right? And then let's fill it with pure white. Now I'm going to add shape to it by giving it a stroke. So I'm going to go to the outside, this is with a layer style, and increase the shape around it, basically kind of filling in this finger. I can see how that works. I can see how that works for the globe. All right, and then I can decide, okay, I like how that spacing is working out for the globe. Now what hand would go well with it? And so it basically shows me I want that kind of outline on the globe, but I want its center to be filled. And this is going to give me the versatility I want. Okay, so how can I clean up that center? All the compositing skills, select around the empty space here. Oh, you want it contiguous though. I want to rasterize. Well, no, that's not works. Then I'm going to delete that from this. There we go. And now this is a sketch I can kind of play with. Um, I have some other things I wanted to, to do. So I will play with those. And one of those is moving these out a little bit more. But 
So this is still just playing, trying to get to a sketch that I'm confident in. First, I'll spread these out. Remember, in compositing, it's all about knowing which layers you're affecting. I'm a little lost. Let's see. There. I thought it was out there. Okay. So I'm just going to move them away, further away. Maybe increase their size a little, to look more like a Wi-Fi symbol. There we go. And then on the other side, same thing. I can actually just take those, duplicate them, flip them, add them to the other side. But maybe at a tilt. Maybe a little smaller. Yeah, that gives me the little bit of kind of wobble. There it is. Now you can do this all in your sketchbook as well, kind of refining your sketch. But that's what's important at this stage. Oh, that's why. Okay. Now I want to add a little bit of that as well. I'm just going to merge them all. Option, layer, merge visible. So I have it all in one place. And now I'm going to try putting a stroke around it. And to kind of play with those widths and proportions. And that shows me all the little debris I have to clean up. Okay, so by compositing or even just working with um, a sketch that I did in my sketchbook and cleaning it up in this way. Ah, come on, computer. What I'm doing is making it easier for my Illustrator program to cut it into clean shapes. So I'm using a stroke. So I subtracted, selected the background, right? deleted it, and then double-clicked on the remaining image, which is free-floating. 